Hi, Christina here, and I'm going to give you a look today at the resources we use for our mini unit on Nunavut, which we recently completed. Now, if you're new here, we're studying Canada for the entire year across many different subjects. For this part, we're going province by province by territory across the country. Now, we have five children. Our children are currently 10, 9, 7, 4, and 1, and we do this family school style. They do have binders with some worksheets in it, which I'll show you in a minute. But first, I start out each unit kind of the same way. We use the Canada Close Up series. You can see what it looks like here. This is for about five to nine year olds is what it's recommended for. And then we also use this here. This is Exploring Canada's Geography, and this is by Apple Press, and this is for grades four to six. And when I show you their binder, you can see what some of these look like. And then we also use this series here, Canadian Sites and Symbols, just because there's a few things in here that the Canada Up Close doesn't cover and so I like to add those in. That's what that one looks like. We're also using Donna Ward's Canada's Natives long ago. And we did the Arctic section in here. And I'll show you what that looks like. Just like that. We also have been watching these videos. This one is the Arctic. This is McIntyre Media and it is uh, our Canada is geographic regions. It's about 20-25 minutes and it's really good. It's from 2016. Um, just a very good kind of overall view and um, information about the Arctic, the people, the geography, the history. Um, this has been a really great series and so we watched this one. And then because there's a lot of crossover between subjects, we're trying to read books that take place in each province or territory as we go along. So for this unit, we read from the Canadian Flyer series, which we've been reading, Beware Pirates. This is number one in the series. It's a very easy read. There's pictures. <clears throat> um, it was okay. It was a little awkward. I'm not sure it was my favorite one, but it wasn't the worst one either. It was okay. And then we read this book here. I think it's pronounced Akavak, An Eskimo Journey by James Houston. I'll show you the inside. Oh. There we go. So there's some pictures and writing. Um, it's not actually divided into chapters. It's one long piece of writing. And we really like this story. It was simple, but um, it had some great information about traditional ways of life and about relationships and about hardships and um, <clears throat> adventure. My children really liked it and so did I. So highly recommend this book. And then the last read aloud we did <clears throat> was this one, Mystery in the Frozen Lands by Martin Godfrey. I'll give you a look inside here. This one has no pictures, more writing. Um, this one was kind of a mix. I think it would probably suit older children better. It actually starts off right in the beginning talking about a suicide, which is a little hard to um, unexpected. I had to talk to the children a bit. So um, I would say this is more for kind of the mid-teens. It was an okay story though, interesting um, about the Franklin Expedition and my children wanted to know more about it so it was a good book in that way. And then I had my two older children do some extra reading, independent reading. My eight, now just her nine year old, read from the I Am Canada series, Graves of Ice by John Wilson and he said that he liked it. And This is what it looks like inside and it's um, set up like a diary form. And then this book here, my 10 year old read, Black Diamonds, and it's also James Houston. This is actually the second one I believe in this series. Um, so he was a little confused because he hadn't read the first one, but he did like it quite a lot. This is what it looks like. He um, asked me to get some more of his books from the library, so that was a good read. And then we also included some um, educational information from Polar Pen Pal. And we got this really cute postcard, which I just love. Um, handwritten message on the back and some other things which I'll link the video up below if you want to see exactly what came with that um, and how we liked that because we really did. So I'm going to turn the camera around and give you a look at their binders and then also at the books um, we also had on hand because we like to have extra books on hand. And then I'm going to tell you about their art project and the artists that we studied for this unit. So here's an overview of the kids binders. These are those pages from Apple Press. Um, now my four-year-old, my preschooler, I just give her a map so she kind of gets familiar with the, the area of the province of territory looks like and then she just gets coloring pages. So 
this is all that's in her unit here. She just colors or draws or does whatever she wants while she listens, so that's hers. This is my second grader, my seven-year-old. Give you a quick look through his. And I really do like the Apple Press pages, those books, because um, it's so varied. There's such a great range of information and topics. Oh, does someone let me turn? There we go. This one. He did find this one really difficult, so um, I told him not to do that one. And then at the end, they have a map, which looks like he didn't fill that out either. And then there's um, a quiz that we do, and then his notes are here. Note taking something we've been working on this year. So those are his notes. So what I typically do is just add in a few pages as the children get older. So this is my third grader who was eight slash nine this year. But again, a great variety of information about the ecosystem, the history, the resources, geography. There's um, grid reading, map reading skills in there. Just a lot of different, um, very useful information. his notes here. But then um, he did more notes. And then this one here is my fourth grader. No, fifth grader. And he's 10. Again, just adding extra pages in like that one on the government. And they just did some of these each day as we went through. And here's a look at his notes, which again are longer as he's older. So there you go. That is an overview of their binders. So here's a look at some of the books that we had on hand. So this is another James Houston one. This is The Falcon Bow, an Arctic Legend. Give you a quick look inside here. And we had another one by him. This is Frozen Fire, Tale of Courage. Oops. We had this one here by Eric Wilson, Canadian Mysteries, Volume 3. like. This one here is Joy of Apex. I think that's how you say it. This is from Reindeer Lake to Eskimo Point. This is more for an adult or an older child. Only in my hometown. Beautiful artwork in it. This one is the people and culture of the Inuit. This is um, the artist that we studied here. Exploring the frozen north. The 
Arctic. Some great imagery and pictures in here. This is the Legend of the Fog. Arctic stories. This one is Trip to the Moon. Let's see, they have it in, um, I want to say that's a Nectatuck, but I might be wrong. <laughs> it's one of the Inuit languages. Kamek, an Inuit puppy story. This one is called The Old Ways by Susan Margaret Chapman. The Inukshuk book. This has some great pictures, um, artwork in it as well. This is a series we've been using through our entire years, the Canadian Geographic Regions, and this is the Canadian Shield. These books are all set up in the same way. This is another series, Canadian Aboriginal Art and Culture, we've been using throughout the year. This is the Inuit book. In their series, um, each book is set up in the same format. This is another series of views, it's just called None of It. Oh. There we go. This one has um, more pictures, kind of less writing. This one is on the shoulder of a giant, an Inuit folk tale. Some great pictures in here too, and an interesting story. This is another one from the same series, and it's called The North. Wild Eggs, A Tale of Arctic Egg Collecting. Some great pictures in here too. And then this one here is Arctic Adventures, Tales from Inuit Artists. Someone else had put the notes in there. Um, there was also one other book, T is for Territories, that um, I didn't get in time, but that's another one that I had looked up. Now for this unit, we studied Kenogiak Ashavak, and I'm sure I'm butchering that name and I do apologize um, for our artists though. And then the kids went on to use foam paper plates just to make prints, and they made some really cool ones, so I'll show you what they look like here. So there's all our information and the resources we use for our mini unit and none of it. If I've missed anything, if you have any questions, please go ahead and leave them down below and I'll try and answer them for you. Otherwise though, I hope you're having a great day. Take care.